Anthony. Anthony, I I see you, Anthony. Hold on, let me let me pause. You can hear me. I can hear you. Okay, that's fine. And I'm up for a prayer right now. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we uh, come today, we thank you for this is truly uh, the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Father, because uh, this day was set aside way back in uh, the uh, fourth century as the day that we come together corporately to worship you and give you praise and glory. Now, it's not for form nor fashion, but we come wholeheartedly, Lord. Uh, we understand that you only uh, hear and accept the worship of people who are wholehearted, who have jumped in it with both feet. And yes, Lord. we are not uh, perfect uh, in any way, but we uh, know that, Father, you take our imperfections and you make them good. Yes, yes. Father, we pray that you would take our stammering lips, our stammering tongues, and make them good. Pray that you would energize them, because without that, nothing is good. And so we pray that you would uh, save somebody today, sanctify somebody, and certainly fill us with the Holy Ghost. We pray for Yes. Hope Evangelistic Ministries and all the other ministries that are here represented because we are yes. one one body. And yes. we ask that you would do it, Father, in the name of Jesus. Break yokes, give answers to prayers, and strengthen our spirits. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And amen. Amen. amen, amen, amen. Are you unmuted, Doc Qualls? Let me hear, let me hear some sound on you. Yes, yes. Okay, go uh, ahead. Lord God, we do thank you for access by faith into this grace wherein we're already standing. Yes. God, we rejoice in your presence. We, oh God, take pleasure in your promises and your power and the provision that you've made for every area of our lives. Now, God, we realize that uh, this moment and this hour, oh God, uh, is that you might prepare us and equip us and enable us so that you might continue to usher us into uh, the new season 
the new assignments and the new purpose and plan that you have for our lives. God, as we approach uh, your throne even now, we do see you high and lifted up. And we desire that your glory would continue to fill every space. God, we ask now that you would anoint us so that we're able to hear, anoint our ears so that we're able to hear what the Spirit will say to us this afternoon. God, we thank you for being faithful. We thank you for being immutable. We thank you for being uh, holy. We thank you for being righteous. We thank you, oh God, for being merciful. We thank you, Lord God, for both your uh, communicable attributes and your non-communicable att communicable attributes, knowing, oh God, that everything, oh God, that's ascribed to you, that's attributed to you, that's over is overflowing into the life of every believer that's on this call this afternoon. So God, we worship you, we honor you, we give you praise and thanks. God, we're convinced uh, that we don't have to wait till battles are over, but we've made up our mind even in this moment to, oh God, give you praise, to give you honor, and to give you glory. Bless now, oh God, sanctify, set apart, oh God, send forth, oh God, hallelujah, and give us strength for the journey. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Okay, Melvin. Can't hear you, Melvin. Melvin, can't hear you. Cannot hear you. Unmute yourself, please. Say something so I can see. I can. You're still muted. You see the. Okay, say something. Oh, you're back at. Do it again. You, there you go. That's it. Say something. Say something. Can't hear you. Turn your volume up. Turn your volume up. You were unmuted. Your volume was down. Can't hear you. No, no, no. Can't hear you, buddy. Okay. Let, let, me, let me get back to you. Anthony. Anthony, come, see, if you, see if you can come in. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Father, we thank you right now that we can come Work to on it, Melvin. This, morning, this afternoon. We come to you giving you thanks. We give you the praise on, the, on this afternoon, Father, that we can come together uh, and this uh, medium that we have, Father God, to uh, glorify your name, to fellowship with believers uh, with like faith on this afternoon, Father. We come with an expectation that you're going to do something great in our midst, Father God. We come, Father God, expecting the Holy Ghost to show up and show out. Glory to God. As we come together, as we uh, fellowship, we Pray right now that as the word come forth, that it fall on good ground, Father God, that we will be, Father God, enlightened and give direction as we, Father God, expect you to speak to us on this afternoon. We pray right now that the Holy Ghost begin to have his way in us and through us, Father. We expect, Father God, that you're going to cause, Father God, things to turn around, Father God, in our lives, Father God, in, in a way, God, that We'll have the direction, we'll have, Father God, the power, we'll have the provision, and we'll have, Father God, the things that you have already prepared uh, us to do in this time, in this season, Father God. So we pray right now your blessings. Father God, we pray for every family member represented. Father God, that any family member going through anything, uh, especially this situation with this virus, we pray that you call supernatural healing, Father God, yes, to take place yes. in the lives of, yes. of every family represented here, Father God. We pray right now, Father God, that you will provide, Father God, and that the spirit of the living God will begin to even uh, wax strong upon each and every one of us, Father God. 
We praise you now. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Melvin, are you ready? Belinda? Belinda, you want to pray for Sabrina? Bring her okay. on. I'm here. Oh, men pray. I'm asking. Okay, go ahead, Melvin. Heavenly Father, first we give thanks to you for all things, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this new day, Lord God, and a new opportunity to always give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for the vessel that's going to speak us this hour, Lord. We ask that you anoint her so she can flow, Lord, through the Spirit freely, Lord God. Have your way throughout this service, Lord God. This is family calling upon you, Lord God, for we are your people, Lord God, and we give thy name to praise for what's going on in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, we just lift your servant up to you this evening, Lord God. We thank you for the word that you've already placed in her heart and in her spirit, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that the word will come forth with boldness, God. And we know that your word, when it's sent, it will accomplish what you sent it to do. And we thank you right now, Lord God, for what you're going to do in this service through your servant, God. Continue to bless, strengthen, and keep her in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. I ask, uh, you know, I'm, I'll kind of be mindful of, of putting this woman of God up and having all men pray for him when there's so many women that are here. Uh, and I wanted to represent. <laughs> amen. Amen. Uh, give me a minute. I want to see something, but I won't, I will not, I have not asked her either way. Sabrina, I have not, I did not ask you. I'm looking through the list and I do see them. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. I did not ask you. Um, I did not ask you to, uh, to prepare to, uh, to preach with a, with a uh, translator. I did not put that on you. I did not prepare for it, but um, I'm sure Rudy will take care of that uh, in his own way. Uh, but so, uh, I, I do believe that we do. Huh? I would need to pause for the translator. No, you do not. You do not. Okay. I'm not going to put that on you. Uh, okay. The, uh, but next, uh, third Thursday, uh, Ron Quarles will be here uh, preaching for us. And, um, uh, and he will, uh, he will help translate. Next time, uh, 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 Sabrina. Next time. Okay. The woman of God is. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm going to try to introduce her. I don't know if I can. I think I wrote something down. Um, the, the name of the church was so 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 special that I wanted to make sure I didn't mess it up. Power of Resurrection Church. Is that right, Sabrina? Power of Resurrection Baptist Church. Baptist mm -hmm. Church. Okay. Power of Resurrection Baptist Church. Who's your pastor? Pastor James and Pastor Patricia Wells. James and Patricia Wells. Amen. I was with them on last week on Zoom. Amen. A uh, powerful couple. Amen. I just thank and praise God for this time. Um, from what I see, it looks like we're all here. Everybody's present, supposed to be present. Uh, shout out to Rudy and 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 I think uh, Eduardo is with Rudy and his family. Uh, so we want to go ahead and and give you the time that you need to minister as you see fit. How whatever God have you to do to preach, pray, whatever. Uh, I, I I I I I told you this uh, before, and I'll say it again before all. But let God use you the way He uses you. Uh, uh, one thing that's outstanding with this woman of God is that I see so many parallels uh, with our ministry. A lot of things that, that she's overcome, a lot of things that she's gone through uh, as a youth. I did. I had the same issues and, uh, and God has tend to have made us kindred spirits. Amen. And, and I, I just believe, I know she doesn't do a lot of public speaking, but she does a lot of ministry. And that's a big difference in the two. So 
What I want to do, Sabrina, is let you come on and do whatever it is you want to do. And uh, I'm going to ask everybody to be praying for her. She doesn't do a whole lot of public speaking, but I just believe God is getting ready to change some things in her. Amen. 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 Sabrina, it's on you. Hey. Hallelujah to the most high God. Let me pray. Father, in the name, Lord Jesus, I am so grateful that you're God Almighty sovereign in our lives and that you came and you gave your son Jesus to be the propitiation for us. And so we're so grateful for this time to hear what you have to say to us today. Our, our, we are here with open hearts. Our ears are open to hear you and you only. Be glorified in this space of time. And I thank you now in advance for rebuking the devourer. I declare your word will go forth with what you intended in Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Paul and Pastor Belinda Alexander, I am so grateful to you guys. I really am grateful for your ministries and for you and for all the years, decades actually, that you've, uh, God has just placed them in, in, you know, you guys in my life. And it's such interesting, like you said, how we, we have been knitted in such a way until it's, it has to be God. It's just amazing. I am grateful for you. I'm grateful for my pastors, James and Patricia as well. And like you said, the, uh, I'm a member of the Power of the Resurrection Baptist Church, which is in Temple Hills, Maryland, where I am just elated to be in a place in the pasture where I am. It's, it's where God has led me to, intentionally led me there for uh, the teaching that I need for this season in my life. And I'm grateful for them. And for my husband, Leroy, I am grateful for him, 37 years to the glory of God. And we're just grateful for him being a part of our, my life as well. And to all who has an ear to hear, I declare you here today what the Spirit is saying to the church. This afternoon, we're gonna be privileged to know what God is saying to his body in this hour. Here's a question. How many people have heard the lyrics, that in, the song that includes the lyrics, you are all my righteousness. I stand complete in you and I worship. Anybody heard that? Okay. Most of us have actually sang the song that included the word, you are all my righteousness, talking about God. I stand complete in you and I worship. How did sinful man come into a righteousness and a completeness that allow us to worship the God of the universe? What happened? How did that happen? Let's go to the scripture. You can uh, turn with me or tap with me, whatever you have there, devices. And if you go to 2 Corinthians, New Testament, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, and this is where Paul is teaching. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For the rest of this uh, message, I'll be using the King James Version of the Bible. Okay. And 2 Corinthians 5, 21 reads, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So today we're going to talk about the exchange, the process, and the results. So we're going to talk about an exchange, a process, and then we're going to talk about the results. And this has been, um, this actually, the whole thought process of this message came to me about a month and a half ago. And I had many questions concerning the righteousness of the believer. And so God, before Pastor Paul ever called me, I was already studying this to see what was going on and what had happened, that we are allowed to come into the presence of almighty, sovereign, all-knowing God and declare that he is all my righteousness and I stand complete in him. And, and I'm allowed to worship. How did that happen? Well, first thing that happened was there was an exchange. Now, an exchange is nothing more than giving one thing and receiving another. That's all it is. And during any exchange, the exchange doesn't have to be the same or equivalent. Hey, I'm going on out. Pardon? Oh, I'm sorry. 
So the exchange uh, doesn't have to be the same. Levi. So in this one, in today's message, the exchange is definitely not the same of equal value. So what happened with the first uh, Jesus, remember Jesus was made Jesus was made by God the Father to be sin for us. Let's look at the scripture again. Okay. I'll wait for that music to stop though. We're good. All right. So the by the scripture for 2 Corinthians 5:21. And I'm just gonna declare no weapon formed against the word will prosper. Not one will prosper. The word will go forth. And Amen. it will go forth Amen. with accuracy. It will go forth with anointing that will destroy every yoke and remove every burden in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And the reason being is he has made us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, our scripture. So if we look at the scripture, 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, For he, that's God, has made him, that's Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we, that's us, might be made the righteousness of God in him. So the first part of that scripture, for he hath made, that's a past tense. So that's already done. Jesus was made sin for us. That's why he was created. Well, he was created. He was used. He, before the foundations of the earth, he was already prepared to be the sin offering for us. All right. So that was his exchange. But then the question becomes, why did we have to have an exchange? Because Isaiah 40, 64 and 6 says that our own righteousness is like filthy rags before the Lord. And so we cannot, we can never come into fellowship with the Lord on our own righteousness, on our own merits. And Romans 1 and 18 says the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. And so we were born in sin, the Bible says, and we were shaped in iniquity, which, uh, which causes a, a separation from God. So what happened, God gave a plan to redeem us, to include us in his plan. He came up with a plan of redemption. And in 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, it says, for God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us. That whether we be wake or sleep, we should live together with him. So he has made provisions through the exchange. So what did God give in Jesus give in this exchange? He gave himself and he gave righteousness. So when Jesus was made sin for us, he had to give up quite a bit. Now, I can't tell you all that he gave up because really we don't know all that he's given up. And everything that he gave up really wasn't written because all that he gave up from heaven's view, we don't really know what's all in heaven. So, but we know he gave up everything that was there. So his life he gave up. He gave up a place where he was loved, worshipped, adored, respected, and he came to a place called earth where he was despised of men, rejected by his own, and he was not received. He was born in a stable of all places to leave the decorative place. It ought to be a nice day. All the splendors of heaven. He gave that up, and he came here, and he was born in a stable. He gave up his perfect heavenly body to take on the form of man, to endure the elements of the earth. He gave that up. And I thought it was interesting while I was thinking of the things that he gave up. So they had no we on our way. Earth. He came down to earth to working class parents. He didn't even live in a palace with kings and queens. He came to working class parents. And the only begotten son ended up having brothers and sisters. Now he gave up a lot. He actually had women in, who helped him in ministry, who supported him. That was unheard of back in that day. He had to pay taxes to crooks. He submitted to soldiers who beat him and to governments that hated him and to religious organizations of all places, of all things that plotted to kill him. He actually allowed himself to be handled by his arch enemy. He gave up so much to give us his righteousness. One thing that he gave up from Hebrews 9 and 22 that was so important for all of us, the Bible said, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood 
and without shedding of blood is no remission. So without him shedding his blood with all that he could have given up, he gave up his blood that became the remission for our sins. And so he has declared that whoever believes in him, that we're not gonna perish, but we're gonna have everlasting life. Now that is forever settled, right? But there's something else going on between eternal life and right now. And that's what we're gonna focus on today. So the next question is, what did we, before we were saved, sinners, give in the exchange? We gave our sin. That's all we had. We gave sin, our sin for selves to him in exchange for his wonderful righteousness. Now, we can see the benefit that we have. It's quite obvious. I mean, we were going, we were hell bound, and now we're eternally saved to be, be with the Lord forever. And he's willing to walk with us through this whole process until we reach eternity. What does he receive in the exchange? Because see, in an exchange, you have to give and you have to receive. Well, did he just receive sin? Hmm, surely, <laughs> surely there must be more, right? That's what I was thinking. So I looked at the scripture again, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, and it says, for he hath made him to be sin for us. That's completed and done. But look at the last part of that scripture. It says that we might be made. That's a process, the righteousness of God in him. It's a process, but it's also a pondering point because we've just said we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, but now I'm saying it's a process. So what's happening here? This was my dilemma for the past couple of weeks, talking to God about this. Once we ask Jesus to save us and come into our hearts, that process is both finished and also beginning. Not to be confused at all. It was finished because when Jesus took our sins, he took all of our sins. So then the question becomes, then why do we still sin? A fair question, right? You can say yes if you, <laughs> if you agree. But we were shaping in iniquity, as I said earlier, born in sin. The Bible declared there's not a just man on the earth and all sin. And then there are these sins that we know about. There are sins that are unintentional. And we do these even after salvation, right? Anybody, anybody on the line has been, has never sinned since salvation. Please unmute and let us know. Okay. See, it doesn't happen. So then there's a question of how can the two things be true? We are complete in him. He's all our righteousness and yet we sin. So I could not stop until I found answers. So what happened in my research, I found that there is a sanctification process. There is a positional sanctification that says, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So in our position, positionally, we are exactly what God has determined we're going and are. That's just it. We are. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are healed by the stripes of the Lord Jesus. We do the things he called us to do. We are who he says we are, who the scriptures declares we are. But then there's another part, experiential sanctification. In Romans 12, 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then he tells us not to be conformed to the word, but we got to be transformed by the renewing of the mind. So there's a process in the renewing of the mind. So the best way I can explain this and how God shared this with me that made it clear. In scripture, we have a person we refer to as the prodigal son. In position, he was the son of what appears to be a wealthy man who had means, okay? That was his position. That can't change. In his experience, he left that place, went and threw away his money, you know, did all kinds of wrong things, 
and ended up ready to eat with hogs when he had a very wealthy father willing to help him and keep him. But even at the hog pen, he didn't lose his position as a son. So what I'm saying and what God has shared, he wants us to see us the way he sees us, complete, whole, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, able to do all things through him who, who has called us into the light. Even when we mess up, please repent, but do not allow the enemy to say to you, you can not do this, this, or that for the kingdom because you did this, this, and that. Stay in, operate in your position. Now look at the scripture again, the scripture from 2 Corinthians 5, 21. The very last part of that said that we might be made the righteousness of God, where? In him. So it's in him, what the scripture says, that we live, move, and have our being. It's in him that we move through this life doing the things he's called us to do. We do not go out and do things apart from leading of the Holy Spirit. Okay? The enemy wants us to define ourselves by what we see, what we've done, and what we think, okay? Because sometimes we miss it. Sometimes we mess up. And the enemy wants to keep the body of Christ bound because you did this, you did that, you did this. And when the enemy accuses us, we are to go to the scriptures and declare in his face, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and I speak, and those things I speak becomes because the Lord God Almighty has positioned me to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I know I messed up. I repented, okay? We cannot allow the, the enemy to hold us hostage. We are not going to come into perfection on this side. Does that mean we're not supposed to be Trying? No, that's not what it means. Does that mean we get a pass to sin and do whatever we want? No, that's not what it means. And if the mindset is such that God will forgive me, I'll do whatever I want, that mind needs to be renewed. Because the renewed mind wants to do the things that glorifies the Father. Okay. Romans 8 from the King James Version says, starting with verse 1, says, There is, therefore, now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So we walk after the spirit. Now, being very real, most of us don't walk in the spirit 24 hours a day. Okay? So it's during those times when we're not, where we're subject to make an error. But when we make an error, we know we made an error. The Holy Spirit also knows. If you make an error and the Holy Spirit does not convict you, please go back to God and consult him. Because the Holy Spirit leads and guides us into all truth. He leads and guides us when we mess up to say, you need to go fix that. You need to repent. You need to go uh, get it right with that sister. Get it right with that brother. Okay. So we need to not allow the enemy to come in and squash us, keep us bound, keep us silent, keep us in hiding because of something we've done in our past. The body of Christ is in a place now where it has never been before. We're gonna have to do the things we've never done before because the body must rise up in authority and in power and we cannot do that unless we are in Christ. We have to do it in him, through him. We cannot do it in and of ourselves, okay? First Corinthians 1.30. If you turn there, tap there. First Corinthians 1.30. And it reads, he is the reason you have a relationship with Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So we get our righteousness our sanctification, and our redemption from God, from our relationship with Christ. A question, how many can remember the first time you asked Jesus to come into your heart and that you were saved? Can you remember when that happened? Yes? Nobody remembers. Okay, a couple of people remember. Okay, good. Since that time, 
Have you changed? Yes. All right, great. What happened? Some people say we've grown over the years. Okay, that's a good phrase. As Brother Quarles would say, may I submit to you? We answered the door many times, and I'll explain that. Re Revelation 3.20, yes. It says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Now, this scripture is not for unbelievers. If you look at Revelation 3, you'll see this is being written to, written to a church. It's not to unbelievers. This is to believers. And Jesus is standing at the door knocking, and it's to believers. Interesting. At least I thought. Think about the door or the house with a door as a heart. When Jesus comes and knocks at our hearts, as believers, he's already come into a portion of our heart. When we first asked Jesus to come in, chances are we gave him a portion of our heart. Over time, we will relinquish more to him. And over time, we'll get another knock and he'll say, I, I, I need to come into that door too. I need to come into that room too. The front door, he may have already come in, but there are so many doors within the heart. Okay, there, when I think of a knock on the door, I thought about in real life here, we get a knock on the door or a ring doorbell and we go in and sometimes it's just somebody stopping at the entrance and they're just handing us something we've ordered. Okay, like we've asked for, we've asked God for something. We need a healing and we just open that door enough to get that healing and we're good to go. Okay. Sometimes we get a knock and it's someone coming to just do a repair. Now that person actually enters, but will probably only go to the area that needs to be fixed. You following me? Only the area that needs to be fixed. We're not gonna let them into the whole house. They're not gonna get a walkthrough. They're just coming to fix something in the kitchen. They go straight to the kitchen and they leave. Someone comes over for dinner now, they may come into the front and they may even go into the living room, dining room, press, possibly the washroom and, and, and that's it. If a person comes to spend an overnight with us, we will allow them into all those rooms mentioned before, plus bedrooms. They may have to wash laundry. You hope they don't one night, but bless God. But there's a knock right now that's requiring a permanent residence and full access. Those areas that are already have stuff in them, there are things in those doors, in those closets, in the pantry, in the attic, in the closet. It may be unforgiveness, it may be hatred, it may be prejudice, it could be a, everybody has their own yes. things, okay? But today we ask the Holy Spirit to shed light on every closet, every closed door in our heart that Jesus, the Holy Spirit does not have access to. We repent of those things and take them out and allow Jesus to come in. He has to have full access to every part of our hearts as the body of Christ if we're going to do the thing that's required to do right now, there is a harvest out there waiting. People are going to hell on an hourly basis, by minute by minute basis, mm -hmm. who still have not heard the word, who still have not heard the good news, and who are sitting in churches every day, unfortunately. So we cannot sit by and let the devil say, oh, you did this, you did that, you did this. Our position is, yeah. We are sons and daughters of the almighty God. In him, we rule, we move, we move, we do all that we need to do. We will do the things God called us to do and we will do them as he instructs us when we invite him into every room and give him full access to every part of our heart. We cannot allow the enemy to dupe us any longer. As a result of the exchange, his righteousness, for our filthy sins, surely we can do the work that he's called us to do. The Bible declares in one scripture, and I think everybody knows this one in James 5, 17 and 18, 
is one of the things we supposed to be doing because of this great exchange we've had. Is there any sick among you? Instructions are given. Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him in the, with oil in the name of the Lord. I'm just reading off the page. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Don't add to the word. That's what the word says. So why isn't it happening? Because we've allowed the enemy to dupe us to say, you can't do this. Oh, and here's the other one. Please, if this is in your vocabulary anywhere, please remove it. Baby Christians, find it in the scripture. Salvation is all of God or is none of God. Come on. It's not. Now, true, That's right. we do have to grow in Christ. We understand that. But this baby Christian mentality. When do you call them a teenage Christian? When do you call them a mature Christian? When we label that person a baby Christian and we yeah. never change the label. Jesus. Don't operate in that. Align, don't even align yourself with the enemy to make those people think, I can't do anything until I know. You can do whatever God has called you to do with the power God has indwelled in you Hello. through him dwelling in you and we in him. No yes. such thing. Baby tongues. No. No such thing. We got to speak the things that God is speaking. We can't make it up any longer. That's not going to work. Not in this end season. We cannot do it any longer. The Bible said Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by a space of three years and six months. We can do the things God called us to do when we understand our position in him is that I have to share this one. He's the head, we're the body. That's what we're, right? <clears throat> is that right, Pastor Paul? Yes. Okay. I went for a sonogram one time. And when I saw the first sonogram, it meant absolutely nothing to me. They had to explain this is that and this is that. I'm like, okay, if you say so. But the second time, there was a little person. I could actually tell. There was body, head, legs, feet. It was just amazing, overwhelming, actually. And this is what the Lord spoke to me during that time. He said, just as, I with, just as you can withhold nothing from that child, which means if I ate a peanut butter jelly sandwich, I couldn't say, well, I'm going to let the baby have the peanut butter, and I'm going to have the jelly. Impossible, right? He said, just as you can withhold nothing from her, I'll withhold nothing from you. How can the head consume something and not share it with the body? Impossible. We operate in what Jesus operated in because we operate through him with the leading of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So again, he's knocking. Basement door is going to need to be open. Broom door's got to come open. Storage room's got to come open. And we got to invite him in. There again, without an invitation, he won't come. If it's already filled with whatever it may be filled with, malice, envy, hate, whatever it's filled with, the Holy Spirit will let you, he'll let each of us know what we need to get rid of to give room for him to come in and be the God of all of us, not just a portion of us, okay? We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's time to do the work that he did and listen for the greater works that we must do through him. And there was a song for my whole month of learning and studying. Brian Courtney Wilson just said, I'll just say yes. I'll just say yes, Lord. And that's what he's looking for now. He wants each of us to just say yes. Amen. I want you coming to those places that I've not let you in. I want you, I need you in those. We need him in those places to be all that we're supposed to do. The exchange cost him too much not to for us not to do the work that he's called us to do he paid too much for us to hold back Amen. a portion Amen. of ourselves when he gave yes. all that he had so now if you just say yes everybody can just say yes in whatever way you like or you can think about it dwell on it chew on it for tomorrow night tonight whatever but sometimes or another stop ask the holy spirit to illuminate is there that's not even play with, is there anything in me that's not like, you don't even try it. 
said, Lord, show me. Show me what I need to get rid of. Because we are not going to be perfected on this side. So whatever we get rid of this week, trust me, next week, we need to go again. I mean, because that's, we are wrapped up in flesh. Paul said, you know, we're not going to escape this thing. We're just not going to escape the flesh until we get the new body. But for now, we got to live with this body. Okay. But the word to us today is, will you just say yes? Will you just surrender every portion to the Lord and allow him to be the Lord, the Lord of all of us, of every part of us, that we represent him well in the earth for the great exchange that he made. Father, in the name of Lord Jesus, we thank you for the ears that have heard your word. We thank you for the hearts that have received your word. And we thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit who will illuminate this word to each one of us. And we thank you, Father, that your word did not go out in, in vain. We thank you that it will do the work you have sent it to do. And the army of the Lord will rise up and take our rightful place. And we will dominate in Jesus' name. We will take everything you tell us to take for the, for the kingdom. And we thank you, Father. There is absolutely no lack. We have everything we need through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And we declare again, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 I just thank and praise God for the word of God. Amen. It goes forth with power and conviction. Amen. I believe that... Uh, uh, the level of ministry that she operates in is so great uh, for us from where I stand, from what I see. Amen. The, the, the fact that she's dealing with us individually, she's dealing with, this is what I call true ministry. She, she not only proclaimed the word to us, but ask us to examine ourselves, to, 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 to see, because there are many rooms, there are many rooms in our house, amen, and we don't want to leave the Holy Spirit at, at the door, amen, he should not be at the foyer, amen, and, and, and we all have rooms in our house that need some cleaning, we have rooms that need some, play, some, some, some visitation by the Holy Spirit, so I thank and praise God for the message, and the messenger today, amen. I am uh, truly, truly blessed, amen. I, uh, I wrote down something here, some things I wrote down I can't share, uh, <laughs> but, but the, uh, that ain't it. What did I do with it? We, we have to deal with, excuse me, we have to deal with ourselves. That's, all, that's the only thing I want to say. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that all hearts and minds were open to hear and receive this word. Amen. Uh, I want to also make an announcement here that uh, at the end of this, uh, uh, those of you all who have not taken communion, uh, we're going to have communion. This is our first Sunday. Uh, we're going to have communion today. Uh, if you want to stay on with us and have communion, that's fine. If not, you can drop off. But I just wanted to uh, throw that out there right now. Uh, any comments from any of you, this great cloud of preachers that we have assembled here? Amen. Any comments, anything anybody want to say before uh, we dismiss? Amen. Amen. I didn't hear anybody say anything. I don't, that's unusual. Uh, to, uh, go ahead, Brian. I, yeah, uh, certainly I wanted to say to Sister Sabrina uh, that she is a mighty woman of God. Uh, the way the Holy Spirit spoke to her spoke through her and spoke to us uh, come